Hey, Spitwads, before we get into the show, we need your help. That's right. It's podcast award time. We took home the best comedy show last year. We need your help to get the job done again. Real quick, head over to podcastawards.com, click nominate my favorite podcast, go through the whole process, and then submit the Spitballers podcast for best comedy podcast. And make sure when you do that, you click the little button that says you would like to vote because that means in a couple a couple months, they might pick you to vote for the final shows. Well, and then we have a, a leg up taking home that back to back podcast award for the best comedy podcast. That's podcastawards.com. Thank you all so, so much. Thank you for supporting this podcast. Let's have some fun. What happens when three buffoons give life advice, explore unrealistic situations, and give random topics more thought than they probably deserve? It's the Spitballers Podcast with Andy, Mike, and Jason. Oh, yeah. Scootly do. Yeah, is Sheboygan a city? Did you throw I think a city so. in there? Yo, there's no rule. You can't. What? No proper nouns allowed. What is- it's a city who, whose name basically sounds like a scat, Jason. Yeah, Sheboygan. Or is well, I know where Sheboygan is, Jason. Do you I know where spelled that, is? that wrong in the Google machine. That's for sure. Look, it's it's Take the sound that it uh, makes Wisconsin. when you. You guys remember moon shoes? Close. It's Michigan. Like when we were little, they would sell these moon shoes that that had the springs on them. How do you guys uh, not know what moon shoes are? They I sold those? That. I mean, I always dreamed of having shoes with springs like, oh, so I could is, dunk. This is a ridiculous situation that here I'm surrounded by buffoons. But yeah, they had they would sell <laughs> moon shoes, and you would bounce around in them. Now, you oh my bounce. gosh, those things look awesome. You would not bounce very high, but, that, but Sheboygan is in fact the sound that it would. Look, this joke would have crushed if oh. I wasn't surrounded by idiots. I didn't think that that made me an idiot. I not knowing about these moon shoes. Al Borland, are you, were you familiar with moon shoes before this discussion? Yes, I was. Thank you. I feel also, like also Sheboygan is in Wisconsin, not Michigan. Oh, I see. I knew that because I'm on Google. I'm Wait, looking. Are they really Sheboygan, different? Sheboygan is a city in the U.S. state of Michigan, according to the Sheboygan I looked up. Sheboygan is a city in and the county seat of Sheboygan County, Wisconsin. United so there's States. two of them. There can never be enough Sheboygan. Is this a Springfield situation? Everyone's got a Sheboygan? Uh, well, maybe there's uh, there, Sheboygan, there can be more than California. One. Um, you know, there's only one Sheboygan, Michigan on Wikipedia that I'm okay. looking Who at. Who is the real? That's okay. Wait, so which one? The Wikipedia? I will try which- not to include cities in the back half of my scat. I didn't know it would be so controversial. I didn't know it would lead into a weird moon shoes conversation. <laughs> <laughs> all right maybe i won't maybe mike has proven it's good, it's good that it works okay uh welcome to the Ooh, spitballers sacramento. podcast there's good sacramento, words out there sacramento is not bad you just need syllables the more syllables that you have in a city's name the better so uh give it a shot next week mike you're you're on so all cities what you're on for next week okay we can well, no, I'm all saying cities. That, you're that, saying you're, that, that's your whole scat. That'll that's the the battle plan. And the best part of it is, at the time of this recording, I will remember this discussion five seconds before the scat starts. Yes, that's that's <laughs> and the then best it will part. go and it'll go Phoenix, Dallas, Tallahassee. <laughs> <laughs> it'll be it'll be very good. It'll be Mike. great. We have a great show for you today. Liar, liar, coming back on oh. today's show. One of our favorite segments. <sighs> yes. I Would am, you rather? I'm officially declaring that I will lose today because every other time mm. I'm so positive I'm going to win. So I'm n- no chance today. That's excellent because I declare that Jason will lose. Yeah, I do P- too. Pile on, Andy. Thank you. At Spitballers Pod on Twitter, spitballerspod.com. If you want to go become an official Spitwad supporter of the show, submit your ideas for drafts and your would you rather questions. We look to the Spitwads first for those insights to inform this highly sophisticated hour of podcasting. Well, it's and like the so, captain of the ship is like, hey, where do you guys want to go? Yeah, know. pretty much. 
And then the number one, the number one officer. And they're like, we want to go to Sheboygan. Yeah. are like, all right, we'll take you to Sheboygan. We know where our first live stream is going to be. Our our (laughs) first live show will be in Sheboygan, but two of us will be in one Sheboygan and one will be in the other It turns out there is a Sheboygan, like S-H-E Boygan, and there's a Sheboygan, C-H-E Boygan. One's in Michigan, one's in Wisconsin. Clearly, they uh, probably fought at Mm. one point in time. Over vowels? Yeah, over the, the, the Boygan. You know, her, her Boygan, um, the battle of Boygan, the battle of the Boygans. All right, let's do some what you rather. Would you rather? All right. This question comes in from Bruce. By the way, we have a great draft on today's show as well. This, the second half of, uh, an earlier draft. So look forward to that. Do you guys hear the word Bruce and then just automatically fill in almighty almighty. Oh, yes. really? That, yes, you both yes. do that? Yeah. I mean, look, I grew up on some Jim Carrey and while it wasn't the best movie, <laughs> it still was a movie. So I thought you would go Bruce Wayne. When I hear Bruce, that's what I think. Oh, uh, no, I go right to Bruce almighty. It's just like, like kids named Jake. Sorry, man. You're from state. Farm. You're from state farm. Oh my gosh. Ridiculous. Well, this Bruce from State Farm says, uh, would you rather own the physical copy <laughs> of a video game or the uh, digital download of a video game? This seems like a very practical question. Yes. Bruce is trying to decide, I guess, what to do here. I wonder if it's generational, though, too. Uh, yeah, generational. And I would like to pose this question as a as a different way because it's in the would you rather. We got to be fair to Bruce. We'll answer that. Would you rather have this or that? But this is life advice that I myself need at this time. So, I mean, who so else? Bruce is here for you in a way. Well, I don't want to hear Bruce's advice. I want to hear the advice of, of you two yeah, guys. We, right. we are, we consider ourselves, did you call us a dad spurt? No, but that works too. We're the dad spurts. <laughs> we, but I said experts. We were, sit on three pillars, a very, very elevated and oh, yeah. Very studious, very all knowing people. By the way, I have not gotten my honorary doctorate for this show despite going over 100 episodes. It's ridiculous. So Some school I don't understand needs to reach it. out. Some school needs Guys, to reach I know, out. We know where it's coming from. It's coming from Yale. Sheboygan. It's from oh. Sheboygan. <laughs> Sheboygan, <laughs> Sheboygan <laughs> University. <laughs> Sheboygan doctor. Community College. Reach Do- out to us. Do they give out doctorates there? Uh, all right. But, sorry, Mike. What is your, uh, what is your dilemma in so, your, your situation? As I have been trapped in my home i've been trying to improve this room I, this is my office if you check it out on the youtube it does seem a little cleaner and than you'll it notice it is yeah. a bit cleaner because yeah. i've been i've been trying to make improvements my man and involved in those improvements in my closet is uh, a video game collection that is very extensive those who collect video games may in fact be envious of what is happening in my closet? Could, been, could I ask you a quick question about your collection? Yes, you may. Is a video game collection considered uh, illustrious by volume or by titles? Uh, As in, I, you know what I mean? That's a good question. That's a good question. It, it, it is definitely a combination of both. You, you, you need to have the volume just to get, in, get a foot in the club. Just to make it a collection? Yeah. I mean, okay. that's... <laughs> like, if you have two <laughs> rare titles... You don't, you don't really say you, you have, don't a, have collection. a collection, but you have two rare titles. But yeah. <laughs> while I have a very voluminous collection, I also have some titles in there that are that are seemingly rare. Uh, I don't, and I, I've, I don't even know how those things happen in today's age, where where a video game somehow becomes rare. But as I'm going through them, and I'm very proud of this, like. It's tied to who I am. It's my childhood. You know, it's it's my childhood in boxes. Yeah, it's nostalgic too. Yeah, and I just looking at the games like, oh man, it, I can go back and I can put myself in very specific circumstances of oh, it's like you know, this friend was at my house and we beat this game and it was it was two in the morning and we went yep. out and we got yep. Del Taco and we sell like that's how strong the memories are on here. But these things sit in my closet and I go. I will never play these again. Because <laughs> you know that reality is there, that you I, won't. I'm, yes, I've hit the age where I know the reality is I will never play 99% of these games again, even though with all the new systems now, they're like, oh, we're backwards compatible. I'm like, I'm like great. I'm not playing the backwards games. You're giving me <laughs> they new suck. games. They suck. These are so old. 
I bring this to the council of like, what do I do with this collection? Because for the regular person, it's just a whole crap ton of video games, but that's not all it is for me. It's, is there it's, a monetary it's also a value? I'm sure there could you, is. Could you unload those and make a pretty I'm, penny? I'm, I'm sure I could make money, not a pretty penny. This yeah, isn't like I have a Jordan rookie card in. Yeah, I was going to say I don't. I don't think that video games were ever sold in a way like sports cards, where the rare ones are truly rare because they were limited quantity both sought after and limited quantity no no video game company is designing a game and then being like i'm gonna let five people get their hands on those, this well, product but, but those there do are exist super, though. yeah super nes and nes games have but, tremendous original value yeah but mostly if they are in a box like if, if you have a Correct. laminated box Correct. that's unopened of something then then it's it has multiple value. thousands of dollars if it's just the cartridge they're like oh here's two bucks <laughs> Yes. Okay. Well, let me ask you this. Is it possible? You know, we have our, our grandparents retired and they did their, like, like I feel like my grandparents sat around and watched like the news a lot mm -hmm. and uh, their retirement whittled. was whittled, uh, maybe, I don't know what else they did, to be honest with you. But <laughs> Rocked. Rock, is there a, a chance that, that you might retire and play these one day? Because we always joke about like, you know, you kind of leave the world like you came into it. Uh, I think Seinfeld sure. makes a joke about wearing diapers and being taken care of. And is it possible that because of the simplicity of these old games, you'll return to the simplicity of those old games in your retirement? I will say it is definitely possible. The problem is they have added to the collector's items where they have those Nintendo minis and Super oh. Nintendo minis that have the best of the they games. They have all those games already. And it's it's just it's right there. Like I have well, I have those, but I also well, have the, the real game. The answer to the question here is to to bring it back to the beginning is so clearly and obviously digital to me. <laughs> <laughs> like it's not even remotely close. Because here's the thing, let's say in your old age, you know, 20, 30 years from now, you do want right. to play it. That don't work. That disc is it's not gonna work. The system is not point. gonna work. The digital download is like it's there. And you wanna know what else you can do for nostalgia. If you're not after this for money, if you're like, man, I wanna remember I don't know, scroll through your library. You still have the pictures of like, oh yeah, that game and that I game. Think I remember that. You're, you're hanging up. I see your office. If you're on YouTube, you can see it. Uh I would take your favorite like twenty games and I'd frame them up. If they're if you're not going to sell them and they bring you a feeling when you see them, that's very interesting. Frame them up, hang them on the wall, and then very you see them and you're like, man, I remember that Del Taco Diarrhea I had way back when <laughs> when I beat that game. So yeah, I lose games and then I cause games to no longer work at such a high degree mm. that digital is like, oh, I can't lose it. Foolproof. I can't. <laughs> you break hold it. this for me. Exactly. But, no, uh, I'm digital for sure. And back to Bruce, I have reached the point in my life where. I'm on like I've the the position on either the couch or the bed. I am locked in. Like I actually have I have slight body I impression on this couch. It knows this is where I need to be. If I have to get up to change a game because I need to put the physical copy in, what if what are we in the nineties? That's, that's gonna be hard when you're no. I go too. boop next game. Thank you very much. All right, uh, Tim from the website, would you rather be able to tell your past self one thing or be able to ask your future self one question? Mm. That is very interesting. Mm. So, you know, what, what would you use the past self knowledge for? Like that would be correcting a huge mistake. You could tell sure. you, you know, avoid this, do this. Obviously, I will, I will head it off before you speak. You could go tell your past self to invest in Amazon yeah, yeah. right I, I don't, before I'm, I don't it blows want to go up. the route. I don't want to go the route of the money. What I want to ask is this question. Okay. Imagine that you are the future self. You're li you're just well, right now. We're recording this podcast. All of a sudden, there's you from 10 years ago. You weren't expecting it and they come over and they oh, start Oh, what would you say? Well, just hold on. They come over, they start talking to you and like, "Oh man, hey, future Mike, please tell me something. But then I start thinking about the rules of time travel. If I change anything in this the old person, the, 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 the old version of me, if I change anything of my past, 
I disappear from the photograph back mm. to the future style because think of all the butterfly effects that one simple change is like, hey, don't go to the store on on October 3rd. You'll thank me later. And then all of a sudden I'm just I vanish and I'm gone because but, I don't my my reality doesn't exist does anymore. Does that mean you have to do, do, do you just go away or do you then go back and relive all no, those you, moments? I think that you are go new. away. I thought that created an alternate uh, timeline that you you could still be living in this timeline but then there would be an alternate timeline. But then that timeline. wouldn't fix anything for me so no, screw that guy. You're right, yeah, you're that's right. a real you're good wouldn't. point, Mike. You can eat point. it old self. So it's got to be telling the future and here's the thing about learning from the future is it's a twofer okay you go back you get to tell yourself something you get one thing right this question says one thing if i get to find out something one thing from the future self this is a two for one because you want to know what else i i find out how old do i look okay oh. all right that's an old man so i can find out one thing i can ask a question but i also know i'm at least into my 70s you know okay. what i mean oh i thought you were saying you know you need to go to the botox and get the sure. face lift. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it could be that. You're learning a lot of things. It's a three for a four for one. You're like, oh, man, I didn't get on that diet Jason, plan. Jason, what happens if you go to the future in four years and it's you're, you're greeted with your tombstone? <laughs> well, then, I, then I learned. I guess that just answers asked. That, yes, that's that's called the ultimate exercise and diet plan. <laughs> that is 100%. If I go like 40 years into the future and I see the tombstone, I'm like, well, I got all the information I needed. I am going for a jog. <laughs> Honey, yeah, make but, a smoothie. But, but but until I do that, I will not be going for a jog. Right. <laughs> Nothing. Yeah, because short. I assume I. You know, look. He I, has no assumption I, that he will die at some point. I'm gonna live forever. Nothing short of time traveling to see me in forty years. But I mean, you know, you gather more information than just the. You one think I finding out? Uh, you're 38 years old. Yeah. So you just said 40 years in the future. Do you think finding out that you die by your 88th birthday will motivate you to jog now? No, but if I get there and, uh, you know, by the 78th birthday. Oh, 78th birthday. That's I'm right. still alive. Mathematics. All right. Okay. Yeah. And I see that. I'm like, fantastic. I'm good same, to go. Same path. I'm going keep skydiving. On, keep on keeping on. Yeah. Well, I am not surprised that we trickled alternate down into realities, alternate realities man. here. Um, String one, theory. Look into it. If you throw it. some of those away, is there a, is there one that you just prefer? Is there one that you just say like, you'd rather give yourself a lesson or you'd rather uh, find out about the future? Just in general. I believe outside of going back and doing the whole betting thing, which is uh, you know overplayed, I think learning from the future would be cooler. Like I am more curious. I don't. I don't, I don't look at my past, past and think to myself, oh man. I should not have married my wife. You know, you know what I mean. Like, I gotta go back and give the warning. I, I, I love my wife. I'm, I'm happy with my family and where I'm at. So I don't like have some inherent. I need to go back and fix this one major mistake. In which case, I am far more attracted towards the future to see. I'm just mm. so curious where things go and how things look and, you know, how fat am I and things like that. So. <laughs> Uh, I'm I'm definitely on the future side. And I'm with Jason. I'm going to the future because I, of what I believe of possible time travel is if I go back, either I vanish, or nothing has changed for me. So it did, it does me no good. I've just changed the reality for some other version of myself. All right, real. Uh, let's go through these ones really what's your, quickly. What's your answer, Andy? I think I'm with you guys. I think I don't have any. I'm blessed to not have any kind of monumental regret that I need to edit undo. There's certainly things that all of us have that we were like, man, I wish that I had known 10 years ago. You know, I think about like family members that have passed or, since then. And I'm like, I wish I had taken more advantage of time with them or things like that. All of us um, could just go to 2021 and be like, we good? Fine. Are we good? Yeah, no. Okay. Are we? Thanks. That will make things a lot better for me. It's where you go and you try to ask your future self something and there's nobody. There's just no, you go to 2022. <laughs> like, I knew it. I know it. I knew it. There's nobody there to ask. All right, real quick, Taters McGee. Uh, oh. here's the game. Pick two. One is gone forever. Okay. Oh. All right. Cheeses, meats, breads. Delicious. Pick oh. two, one is gone forever. Cheese is gone. I love cheese. I love meat. I love oh, bread. Oh, wait. So Oh, it's 
I'm okay, I was it. reading this question very wrong. I th- I was reading two of the three entire categories. So we're we're going so cheese meat breads. I got to get rid of one. I it's possible you interpreted the question the right way. I don't know. I was going uh, quick list here. So cheeses, okay. meats, and breads. I would keep cheese. I would keep meat. I guess, and I'd go. I'd have to let bread go. Man, I would be so. Much I had five if slices of cheese for lunch today. So that <laughs> that, that answers that question. Wait, like just five slices of cheese? No, that not was just your five. Lunch? No, not just. But okay. listen, listen. I've been telling my wife how much I love white American cheese. If you go to your local grocer, white American cheese. I love it so much that I wanted to see if I wouldn't love it after eating so many slices in a row, and I didn't love it as much after the fifth slice. Oh, all right. yeah, it's so understandable. It, it did wear out a little bit, but through three to four slices, it was perfect. Um, Mike, I will get rid of. You've been Mr. Keto in the yeah, past. Yeah, I've I've, gotta, I've survived in a world for multiple years without bread, so I will get rid of bread. Movies, music, books. Oh, great. <laughs> See you later, books. Uh, oh, no. I mean, look, if, if there's no music, there's no score in my movies, and movies is really the thing I need the most. So, uh, Yeah, as if, books, oh, as if books haven't played any part in your movie, in, in movies being created. Look, I will miss yeah, the get Harry ready Potter for series, suck. but uh, I'm sure there's a lot of original uh, I'll, I'll, I'll ditch the movies. I don't watch enough movies. I'll go music and books. I watch movies all the time. And how do you ditch music, Mike? It's you. You're I don't music know. Man. I don't know how I ditch music. That where I'm stuck is just what have I done to the world? If I rid <laughs> <laughs> your responsibility here, yeah, I, do. I feel it, man. Heavy as the head. Like if movies have turned into the only way that we can learn about history. We're going to be dumb. We are in trouble. We are in trouble. Because we've been doing that for I thought a while. this was just for ourselves. Oh, it's just for... Oh, oh Jason. You, if it's just for you ourself. Have, you have lifted a burden up yeah. off of me because then the books can hit the bricks. I would not take books away from history. <laughs> All right. Appetizers, main courses, and desserts. <gasps> I mm. think I've got to ditch main courses here. <laughs> I love appetizers <laughs> and desserts. They're the best, what? my most. Oh what? goodness! I my like I you you guys were back with me in bro, the broken bowl days, right? We'd go to lunch, and I would rather get twelve items that I eat a couple bites of each than like my favorite thing that I consume in its entirety. So a meal of appetizers, like if I go to the Cheesecake Factory, half like I'm usually getting like three appetizers, yeah, and no meal. But it's. It's fun sometimes. It's fun to eat breakfast for dinner sometimes. Right. You're stuck in appetizerville, man. You're st- yeah. I mean, Jason's not stuck there, though, because I've been around this man for so many years. He likes a plurality of options to eat, so he he's not stuck. He will just eat quantities that make it a main course for his belly. That's right. Well, I'm talking about your, your right. options. Uh, I have to... The one that I can live without is desserts. Yeah, I can't lose desserts, bro. I I, I get <laughs> I it. Can't. I can't. I honest. I I I I recognize get rid of appetizers this. for me. I recognize this about my life that I I feel like a uh, a lone man. I'm 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 Tom Hanks on this island of of I'm fine without desserts. I like them, but I would much rather load up on the appetizers and the main course and then just be too full for dessert. All right, I never fair save enough. room. Fair enough. Let's move on. Liar, liar. Pants on fire. All right, we've already determined that Jason will fail spectacularly on today's show. We are playing another game of liar, liar. There are two truths. There is one lie. We are going, Mike and I are going to defeat... I don't care about def- you Look, guys defeating Al me. I care about Man. Al. No, we're going to defeat Al. I just, You're not. You're going to fail. I just spotted note number two in round one. I haven't seen him yet. Good luck getting <laughs> read through that. <laughs> All right, here we go. Oh, my goodness. I'm don't to, read it. Just read, just read yes. it like you're reading for uh, the first time. This okay. is a speech I, I you've seen for yet. the first time. I'm going to read three facts. One of them is not a fact. We have to determine it. 
defeat Al Borland. Number one, flowers broadcast a variable static electricity signal that tells a bee whether the flower has already been emptied by its coworker. Mm-hmm. Look, ver- the verbiage is kind of gross, but okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Number two, a slot's nipples are in their <laughs> armpits. <laughs> That is the, oh, mercy. If you thought regular breastfeeding was uh, awkward in public, maybe? I don't know. This one would be worse. <laughs> the smell. <laughs> yeah, the smell. Do you deodorize? Do you need a lot of deodorant in that situation? If I had to breastfeed a child oh! with a nipple from my armpit. Uh, our, not look, good. The look, child would refuse, good, would refuse all sustenance. <laughs> <laughs> All right, third one. Algebra was named after the creator and father of algebra, Muhammad Algebra. Algebra. Come on. Oh, That's oh got to be. Come oh my on. Goodness. So when you're Muhammad reading this. Muhammad Algebra? Jeb- <laughs> Come on. Every time I Jebra. say it, it seems stupid. Oh. I believe the sloths one because animals are, there's so many of them. I mean, we, at least one of them has got to have a slipping. nipple. And also- Sloths are so weird. Like they're yeah. one of the weirdest creations. Now you're really into them, right? My daughter loves Look, sloths. They're, so they're like very, very one. cute. They're very cute. But here's the question: How have sloths survived natural predators in the wild? I don't think anything thinks it's a thing. You know <laughs> what I mean? Like it moves so slow. They're just like I. I'm looking for an animal. That's not an animal. That's part of a tree. I, that's already the, dead. They think it's already dead. Exactly. Well, they would probably eat a dead animal. That's true. To be fair. Um, so, so when you first started have reading, nipples. Yeah. when you first started reading, when you flowers broadcast a variable static electricity signal, I knew it was the lie. I knew it was the, because a variable static electricity that's trying too hard. Um, but goodness just, gracious, he's, 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 the just, algebra, the algebra at the end is it's so bad. It's so bad. You know what? I or is it so true. good? It or is it so true. good? Oh, no. I was just tempted to Google it because I wanted to know the answer. <laughs> I forgot the game for a second. I was like, I need cheating. to Google that. That seems like a lie. Um, this is tough, Mike, because if we all go with the one that's jumping out at us and we're wrong, this game is over. I mean, we've already lost that. All right, talk, well, not talk. necessarily because well, there's two more. If you if we go two and one against... Yeah, it'd be better than normal. I, I'm going... With my gut. I'm going with the variable static electricity is just too verbose. He's okay. trying too hard. I already said I was going to lose. I think he's got me hook, line, and All right, Andy, here. walk me through your three, and then I will comment. Well, what? what my Where I'm thinking? Yeah. Just, so I think the ha- sloth's nipples any? are in the armpits for sure. Okay, so, so I'm you, deciding between the other two. Okay. And I, I just cannot accept that the father of algebra is Muhammad Al-Jabra. So I'm going to call that one the lie. I My thought be- is that I, I thought the first one was a lie, too. I don't think a bee gets told that it's emptied by a coworker. I mean, what kind of language is this? So I'm going to say the algebra one, though, is the lie. I just can't. I can't live with that. Yeah, it's got to be the algebra. It Are you has, changing? I, uh, I, I, uh, I believe Those that that's a lie. Those of you at home, I'm- Spitwads, I yeah, hope you're playing along and see if you can beat Al. Jason, what are you doing? I, I, ah, uh, I have to change because it's not the math one. It's, it's right, not. We're algebra. not locked in. It's not algebra. It's it's clearly not algebra. It's Al- okay. Algebra, Mike. Mike what are you doing? Here's my thought process. I actually feel pretty good that the flowers one is true. The world of insects and animals is very bizarre. They work through chemical sense. I imagine that they work through variable static variable electricity. electricity. Signals. Yeah, I. And the, the the algebra one is just like I, I it's got to. It, all right, sloth, make your call, oh, man. Sloth, okay, sloths nipples in their armpits. It seems so dumb. That's it. I'm locking in sloths. Oh, all right. Al, uh, Andy, and Jason are correct on this one. Yes. Okay. <sighs> what a pivot. All right. That's just good for the world. It just seems yes. like the weirdest. His line. name is actually Muhammad Al Quizarimi. Mm. But that's the, so. But uh, everything else is true. Yeah. All right. Yeah, see, that makes so much more sense because if his name was Al Jabra, I don't think you would <laughs> name it that, like Algebra. That felt 
very much like a a joke from like Spaceballs. Like a, a, that's a Mel yes. Brooks joke. There you go. I right. felt like that one might be a layup. That's why it's from the round one. Yeah. And, oh, and it, no. But, but here, here's the thing. Oh, making excuses thing. now, Al. No, no, no. No, Al Setting Borland us up for failure. Is you have done so well in the past that I was scared from the layup. I thought you would be LeBron James, like just letting me coast up for a nice layup, and then you sneak up behind me Squat. and just b- block a moly. Yeah. Yeah. All right, block a moly. That's yeah, a I like block good, a moly. That yeah. is a good word. That is not bad. All right, round two. You guys ready? Ready. In 2018, approximately 8% of college applicants for architecture courses in the U.S. used submissions of what they had built in Minecraft as part of their portfolio. Mm, Okay, I think that's low. Mm -hmm. Low percentage. Uh, (laughs) I think that's true. According to Section 182 of the Alabama State Constitution, Idiots are not allowed <laughs> to vote. I mean, I think that, that's true as well. That can't be. That, isn't that? Wouldn't that be unconstitutional? Not if they oh. defined an idiot as something else long ago. Oh man, that's my right. thought. Okay. And number three, a pizza that has a radius of uh, a radius Z and a height A has volume of pi times Z. Yeah, pi times z times z times a. No way. Wait, a so pizza you're going, that has a radius. Are we just going to be asked height? math questions and see if we can figure out the math? I heard you. you. A pizza okay, that the- has a radius z and a height a has a volume of pi times z times z times a. So it spells out pizza. Yeah, P- so that's pizza. But that would mean it has what? Two radius, two radii? <laughs> Uh, which makes sense, I guess. That's uh, uh, wait. Two radius is one diameter, right? Yeah, but it, but it would be z plus z to equal one diameter. Not if you're times, going, right? You're going t- radius times radius. I can't get into the pizza weeds. You get, with the, you, Jason. You get an ulna. Oh. That was okay, a bone. So- that was a bone joke. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Good night. <laughs> Yeah, it was a huge hit there, Mike. <laughs> a skeletal um, system. That was a skeletal walk off joke. because of a, a radius. Um, all right. Uh, the the Minecraft one is absolutely <laughs> true, right? I think so. Unless it's higher. Unless, like Mike said, it's like twenty five percent. Well, or something but, but stupid. we've agreed that Al Borland does not do that to this. I was just making the joke that I think that's real because mm-hmm. mine. The things you can do in Minecraft are so insane. So, all right, we got we got to pick. I mean, Alabama doesn't let idiots vote. Okay, that, okay, that's unconstitutional. I, I mean, I cannot believe that at this point in time, Alabama, if it has something that Alabama man, I mean, I would like to believe. I, it's not so much that I can't believe. Do they but I would have like a Sheboygan in Alabama? Is there a Sheboygan? Of course, oh, of course, of course they do, Andy. Okay, of course they I, do. I'm I'm locking in the pizza one is the lie. I think the pizza one is absolutely true. I I I'm I'm not worried about that one at all. It's the Alabama uh, idiots okay. are not allowed to vote in the Constitution. That's there's no way that that can be true. So it's Mike's chance here. So I will say, unfortunately, it seems like there's not a Sheboygan, Alabama. However, there is an Alabama Avenue in Sheboygan. So mm, good enough. And so not facto, bad. not yeah, yeah. All right, what are we Mike? doing now? You got to choose. A, uh, well, we aren't doing anything. We've locked in our votes. I was I looking up Sheboygan pe- stats. Where are you guys locked in? I am locked in on the pizza one being a lie, the radius, the pizza am- math equation. And Jason's locking in Alabama uh, as unconstitutional and a lie. That's that, correct. That idiots can't vote. I feel like I am revealing thoughts of Alabama by not voting for that one. <laughs> <laughs> right? I mean, we should all be but voting for that one. Here's the thing. I won't be voting for that one. <laughs> I'm in. I'm in on the pizza one with Andy. All right, all right, Al. Is, is Lock it, it ma- in. Back to back math lies, Owl. Uh, you're all wrong on this one. <gasps> no! no. What? No, no way. He got us with Minecraft, the man. Portland? <laughs> Alabama Constitution reads that all idiots and insane persons and those uh, yeah, convicted Andy of a was crime, right. et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, I think it's just old verbiage. Un. And the pizza one was true too. Pi times z times z times a. Yeah, the formula for volume is something like pi times radius squared. 
uh, yeah. times height. Or oh, radius squared. So there's the Z times Z. Oh, yeah. Freaking And so nerds. you just build it out. Yeah. So That's then a nerd joke. Give me the real stat on the Minecraft thing. Is that actually used at all? I don't think so. The I got that from <laughs> sometimes I uh, I search Reddit for like you just son good, of a gun uh, the Ask Reddit forum and somebody was asking on there if they should use their Minecraft creations uh, as part of their portfolio. So I, oh, that is a good. That's hmm. you got us this time. But here's the deal. Here's the deal. You, we say you you got us, but we're basically one and one here. That's how I feel. So this round three is is gonna make it <laughs> sure, in sure. the game of one versus three. It's tied. That's right. Thank All you. All right. Mike. Last round. A lot of math around here. Hopefully, some of you at home are defeating Al here. <sighs> round three. Number one. Oh, good. More Betty White. Betty White is older <laughs> than the lie detector machine and band aids. Mm, so that's number sure. one. Yeah. Uh, sure. Despite being orange, green, yellow, blue, red, and purple, all Fruit Loops are identically flavored. Mm hmm. Man, Mike, I know you good. eat a Don't lot of Fruit Loops. You good? should know the answer. I'm going to trust Loops you on that. Fruit smell really good. All right, number three. Until 1937, it was illegal for men to be shirtless on American mm. beaches. That sounds about right. That so, sounds absolutely right. That I was feel, tank life. <laughs> yeah, I still okay. feel like it, you know, when I take my shirt off on a beach, I feel like I'm doing it. It's illegal? Really, I'm, yes, I am breaking <laughs> the law. Maybe not well, all men are, but on. I am breaking the law. Citizens arrest! <laughs> I mean, I, I've certainly embraced the 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 short short trunk life, and it's very liberating for for fellas out there. Look, we lived the long trunk life. Yeah, that was a long time. We did that. Get get rid of it, man. Short trunk life is absolutely the way to be. Skies out, thighs out. Get with it. Mm -hmm. Having said that. I think it would be pretty sweet if I had one of those the old school like muscle man. Oh yeah, like the, a, the tank swimsuit that's a full pants. Yeah, like that oh thing will be legit. If you saw a guy strolling down the beach <laughs> in one of those, you go, "Now that that's a man. That's a, that's man, a man right man. there." I'm sure you can find it. You don't need the laws to go back I to 1937. Know. I believe that the lie here is the Fruit Loop one. I don't want to believe that every I, these are Fruit Loops. It's supposed to be a plurality of fruits that i am eating i don't want to just be eating generic fruit flavor for all things i will not accept that i am locking in that fruit loops are not all identically flavored excellent jason this is where i tell you that i'm 100 percent sure that that one is true dang it oh <laughs> see, 100%? I knew. Uh, you've locked it in you said locked in a hundred percent look i know I'll how say, much I'll, Mike... I'll, I'll, I'll dip that to 90 something percent okay i'll 95. stick with it i'll stick with it because i think it was probably illegal to be shirtless on american beaches in 1937 yeah and uh betty white i mean we give her so much respect the lie detector on this show. Is very old, but how old are band aids? So here's the thing with this: I would, I was that's, going that's to say tough. Betty White is the lie because there's all those things that uh, you know when you talk about the age of people that are that are really surprising, um, uh, you know, and and I I think we expect Betty White to be older than those things, and the the lie would be surprising if like the lie detector machine was created 150 years ago. Yeah, so there could I be would, a version of it. I would go that way. However, I know how much like fruit loops when 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 carl's jr came out with fruit loop donuts mike oh, you man, were you so were in line <laughs> yeah, um and and i'm gonna be honest with you i remember tasting different flavors in those fruit loop mm. donuts oh, i do crap. but i did go the, very that, hard to be <laughs> being sure that, that was the was donuts right. and i said 100 <laughs> i said i was start, going to trust to you here with. so i'm gonna trust mike are you are, He's Are having doubts. I can it? see it. He's having a is little bit of doubt. Is it ninety percent now? Is it just no? No, dreaming? I told you it was ninety five percent. Here's what I know. I know for sure that one of the fruit flavored cereals is they're all exactly the same flavor. I know without a doubt that that is yeah. true. But you don't know if it's tricks. Or like, fruit is it tricks? Or... Yeah, is it tricks? Is it fruity pebbles? But I'm, I'm nine. I'm st I'm sticking with ninety. We're going to drop it to 90%. <laughs> yeah. I know for sure that the yellow was lemon at, on that donut. I am but that, so But positive. you're talking about donuts. You're not talking about the cereal. Yeah. So what are you guys going to go with? Betty then? White is older than the lie detector. Locked in for me. Wait a minute. Oh, you're saying that. Oh, okay. He's saying that's the lie, that Betty White is not older than the lie detector or Band-Aids. Oh, I thought what He's you were 100% on sure on was that the, the, was it the Fruit Loops one was a lie? No, I'm I'm with you. I think Betty White older than lie detector. No, the lie detector is going to shock us how old it is. 
And okay. I'm, that could I'm be locking true. in that one. All right, all right let's Al, go. Let us know. All right, you guys all went one and two today. So oh, Mike and no. Jason got that one right. Mm. Yes. Yeah, which means we collectively beat you. No, <laughs> sure. no, no, no. Wait, no. Oh, uh, wait. No, we all got Jason one. Got the, Jason got two of them right. Jason yeah. moved at the last second to, That's to right. algebra. I was algebra and yeah. Betty White for the win. Oh, you're right. My All reverse right. psychology Jason this episode won. has Those were paid tough off. again, Al. Well done. You yeah. are so good at these. It yeah, is, we hate it, you. It is by far my my favorite thing we do because I learned so much. Yeah, the turtles. <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, and the the sloth armpit thing. That's mm-hmm. big that's big time. <laughs> that's, All right. Let's do some That's big time. That's big time. Let's do some drafting. The Spitballers Draft. All righty. We're doing a Mount Rushmore of Iconic Actresses. We did a Mount Rushmore of Iconic Actors, I believe, three or four episodes ago. We had thought about putting them all together, decided to separate them because there's so many actors and actresses to choose from, and you only get to put four up on Mount Rushmore. So we, uh, we separated them. I have the first pick, and I can tell you I am tilting. <laughs> um, look, and... And here's the thing, I, I, Mount. When you say something is a Mount Rushmore, it's it generally carries a certain weight of like you're saying these are historical, yes. the greatest of all time, and iconic, I feel like, memorable. But the way that we are treating this is it's our personal Mount Rushmore. That, at least that's with the, the same, I'm, no, with that, the same that's how qualifiers, though, right? It's not just yes. Yeah, no, we are still saying iconic and memorable, but yes, it's our I'm, own in our minds. What we, what it this is. is what we did with the actors. I'm just yes. telling people of like the, there will be modern day when, actresses on here. We're not just going. Well, this lady was well, she's been a leading lady since the 1940s. So she Barbara, was on the Mar- Barbara Stanwyck was one yeah, of my so favorites. It's like, no, that, that this is this is our Rushmore. These are our favorite actresses. And now again, to be clear, this is only actresses born in or around Sheboygan, Michigan, or Wisconsin. <laughs> of course. <laughs> so Barbara Stanwyck, unfortunately, no. Uh, so so the thing is, is I didn't live during the time of the presidents on Mount Rushmore, right? Historically, I'm able to look at what they did or accomplished and understand why they are up there. Sure. So for my first pick, while I may not be a uh, consumer of every one of the 21 Academy Award Mm -hmm. nominations of this iconic actress. That's a lot. In fact, very few of them. Get it out uh, of the way. Four wins, 21 nominations. I'm going to select what I think is the bona fide 101 in this category. Again, recognition. Sure. Meryl Streep. Mm-hmm. All I'm right. taking Meryl Streep. That 21 is great. nominations. Oh, and man. Uh, I didn't know if either of you would take her. I you knew, knew Jason wouldn't. You knew I wouldn't. We, we, Jason, Jason has wouldn't, a but problem like, with Meryl Streep. Like, I don't want to... Like what are you? What you like? T- top f- top five, just real quick. Top five Meryl Streep movies. Yes, uh, thank you, Mike. Um, I'll tell you, well, it's not into the woods. Go through, I was going to go through the nominations and ask you if you've seen any of them. You Let's ready? do it. That's a great. Uh, game. That's the, why I gave the preface. The Deer Hunter started. I no. understand that Meryl Streep is regarded as one of the best actresses of all time, but m- me watching Meryl Streep movies is. This is why I said the whole giant thing about me not living during the president's era. All right. No, it's it's good. Thank it's you. A Twenty-one Academy Award nominations. That's not even. I know like she all the dominates. I, right. am, I, I let get me just it. ask you real quick. I'm going to go through them real fast. If you've seen it, I want you to say something because that'll make it okay. easier, right? Excellent. There's Excellent. twenty-one of them. The Deer Hunter. No. Kramer no. versus Kramer. No. No. The French Lieutenant's Woman. No. No. Sophie's Choice. No. Did you see that? Uh, no, but I know. Uh, I know of it. Yeah, I, very much. Silkwood. No. What? Out of Africa. No. No. I, I've seen that. All right. Ironwood. No. No. Or Ironweed. Sorry. <laughs> no, I haven't also seen that no. one either. All right. <laughs> don't, don't even say no. Just interrupt me if okay. you've seen it. A Cry in the Dark, Postcards from the Edge, The Bridges of Madison County, One True Thing, Music of the Heart, Adaptation. I saw that. The Devil Wears Prada, Doubt, Julia, Julie and Julia, <laughs> The Iron Lady, Into the Woods, August. Yes. I've into seen the Into woods? the Woods, and she right. was hor- horrific in that. Oh, yeah. come Nominated on, No, she was... No, no, no. Nominated. Go watch. 
and anyone out there. She you is think, great. Jason no, no, no. Has she hated is Meryl great. Streep for his whole life. Here's the here's the thing. I have always said she. I I am so. I think she is so overrated because she is rated number one by any and all lists. She's and I think that doesn't match. But to be fair, I haven't seen all those movies. The movies I have seen. If you go watch something like Into the Woods, it's a musical where she's in it. She's the witch. You come back to me and tell me that, man, she knocked <laughs> that one out of the park. You can't do it with a it's straight like, face. She's uh, terrible in that movie. It's, I, like, I love Russell Crowe, but if you were judging Russell Crowe based on Lame as Rob, you would go, <laughs> right, exactly. he's not very good. A hundred percent the same because it's a musical. It's like, this is not the wheelhouse. But here's the thing. That's not the only musical she's done and she's he been bad at all. He tried his hardest to collapse that Look, whole movie. he tried so hard. <laughs> he, but, but in fairness, Andy, what was the show we just watched, that HBO show? Uh, uh, the the was you, it Little you're Fires? You're so close to it. Which Little, one? Fi- little Fires? Pretty Little Liars. Yeah, Little Fires everywhere. Little Liars. The, the yeah. Little she was on. No, that, she was that's unbelievable. The, that's the Amazon in that. movie. She was so, unbelievable in that. Mm. Oh, so, okay. yeah, yeah. I mean, she she can't act. I that just was have never seen time. her do anyway, it. Anyway, Meryl Streep's my number one pick. She's going on my Mount <laughs> yeah, Rushmore. All right, all right. No, it, she was going to get picked at one point or the other. I just didn't want to have a disingenuous pick of Meryl Streep on my list. But I do. So, <laughs> Hey, that's fine. Look, it's it's not that I don't understand how amazing she is. Her movies are just before my time. Just before uh, my time. Yeah. And to Al, a different Al is trying to tell us about it. Big Little Lies was the HBO show. Little Fires oh. Everywhere is the Amazon show. But Meryl yes, Streep's on Big you. Little and Pretty Lies. Little Liars is... Why is everything That's a teenage something... teenage girl how show. How about this? Come up with an original title so you don't sound like everybody else's show. Ridiculous. Keeping watch in the night. <laughs> I don't know the reference. And Keeping I'm sad. watch in the what night. What is this from? Oh, I was just doing my Russell Crowe impression. Probably Miss Rob. Two, four, six, so oh, one. All right, all right. Let's not let Russell Crowe ruin this. Like, oh, yeah, that's, ruined that's that a movie. great. That's a great point. Uh, so now the game begins. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would say so. I have hopes of of some actresses making it back to me, but. We'll see where you guys lie. So, oh, man. Now I'm tilted because because I felt like I wasn't going to have like every single pick available to me. So I will start. So you get your one-on-one here because you, I if, do. if Streep wasn't and, and your and one-on-one. Really struggling with the old one-on-one. I, look, I am. I'm, I'm, look, I, I mean... I guess I was just doing the old double check, but I I know who the the one one my my favorite actress is because I think she's she is fantastic, always gives a great performance. Eh, I mean, look, the beginning was a little bit rough. <laughs> let's, let's let's be fair, but I'm going with Natalie Portman. Oh Gar- no! Dang it! Dang <laughs> dang dang it! I have I was so good. Jason I knocked just knocked down, his green I knocked screen down over. Jason's Mount oh, Rushmore. Wow. But yes, like, you have. but but Garden State, V for V for Vendetta, Annihilation. These she's are, so up and down. That's my problem with Natalie really? Portman. She's well, had no, no, some she's like, no, real no, no. Cursed it was stinkers. just it was down because the Star Wars prequels. Yes. Not they're not the best. And oh, look, I, okay, Garden State's a those. great Garden State's a great movie. Natalie did Portman you just say Natalie Portman did nothing wrong in those? Hundred percent. You just blame the the writer. I have a note. This is because in complete case you're curious, it's note. awful. Uh, this is a complete sidebar, and I apologize for derailing this for highlighting these amazing actresses. Dang but, it! I wanted Natalie but, Portman. Uh, Star. I want to talk Star Wars, right? People want to crap on the the new trilogy, the the, the new Skywalker saga. That's I fine. have I have been watching. We watched uh, uh, those with my children, and now I said, okay, well, we we need to go back to the beginning, and we're watching all the prequels. If you are crapping. On the new three Star Wars, please go, go watch, watch the prequel. Please, pretty, pretty, please go watch the first three. Yeah, you and too, then Jason, come back because she and we will have a conversation because she stinks. Holy crap! There, there is n- yeah not much redemption in those three no, movies. No, all right, Jason, you got two picks. We want to keep this thing going. Mike with okay. Natalie Portman. Dang it. I don't I, mind the pick. I'm surprised in the first round. She, I think she is fabulous. Uh, she's look, Black uh, she, Swan, out, uh, outstanding, best performance she's had. I think she's phenomenal. I mean, she would have been my number one pick. So yes, wow. thank, thank surprised wow. that it's a first rounder. She would have been two thirds of our first round pick. Shocking. 
and two thirds of our first overall pick. So yeah, she was she was number one on my list. Um, just for the record, Jason would have selected Natalie Portman over Meryl Streep. I just want that on the record. I as uh, as would I. I, I would also uh, I like on that the on the record. Thank you. <laughs> I would take uh, Natalie Portman over Meryl Streep. That's correct. Um, okay, gosh, I feel like oh hmm. Okay, so I see how it's easy to tilt when you yeah. get on the clock. <laughs> Especially I'm, with two picks, man. I'm going a little bit. Yeah, I'm going a little I, bit I know, modern here. I, I won't, I'm not going to say anything. Okay, going a little bit modern here. Um, you know, more more common. But I like I like versatility. I like someone who can be funny and someone who can be serious. Who can play roles that are both like, oh, it takes acting chops. Because uh, everyone thinks when you think of great actors, you think of someone who has really great acting chops, a la Meryl Streep. When you watch drama. Uh, you drama exactly sure. when you watch a movie where someone is uh, more regular more charismatic more just you know a, a chill funny movie you don't give them any credit dude that yes being a like a, a being being a regular believable person on and film while while engaged is while charismatic and so yes. this person i think can do both um and i I'm, I'm a big jennifer lawrence fan so i'm mm. actually taking I'm taking Jennifer Lawrence here. It's it's she's it's a great pick. In Jennifer J Law round. is amazing. All right, uh, man, and and her her rise has been like Andy. Get and get Andy out of here. What is here he doing? I don't know because because Betty White is next on Andy's list, <laughs> followed by like I don't I I don't even know the old actresses, but her her ascension from Hunger Games through American Hustle. X Men Silver Linings Playbook. Like she has just she has taken off like a rocket ship. Twenty fifteen and twenty sixteen, she was the highest paid actress in the world, and it's not for no reason. You, you know what I mean? See Winter's Bone. Winter's Bone is probably uh, one of her best. I have not. Neither of you have seen it clearly, but I can put I can put it on the list. But I have not seen every movie by every actor or actress in the world. I've seen almost none from Meryl uh, Streep. <laughs> uh, all right, Jason, you got another pick. All right, I'm going to go with this one because I think this will surprise you. I don't even know if this one will be on your list because I do feel like on a Mount Rushmore, you need people that aren't just modern day. So I'm, I'm going to switch it up a little bit, go a little bit more. When we were growing up, the 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 okay. Jennifer Lawrence of the time, the biggest actress when we were growing up. So I'm not going all the way back to like Breakfast and Tiffany time. This is making me uncomfortable because I'm pretty sure you're taking my pick now. Well, that, that would make me... Very happy, but I'm going with Julia Roberts. Yeah, that's that's as it. Okay. I mean, she's, she's right. she was just when she was on top, she was the number one, she was a powerhouse, and sure. that was kind of while we were growing up. I think she belongs on a Mount Rushmore, and she stepped away for a while. She's come back, and she she can do it all too. She can be Aaron funny Brockovich, and, outstanding, and endearing, and charming. Yeah. She can, you know, cry with the best of them. Yeah, so, I'm sad. That's that was the one I'd hope. Mm. I almost took her one on one, actually, on the uh, You should have because Meryl Streep would have been there with your last pick. <laughs> That's Mike, I'm so happy that you're on my team here. Because I That's feel fine. like we are a team of two against the world, but I am so happy it's not a team of one. It's it's not that she's bad. It's just that I'm I'm only taking modern day actresses that I grew up with that I'm watching that I've been watching now for, for a bit, and I played the game perfectly. I knew Jason would not take her. So I will. I will add. I got Natalie Portman with my first pick. I got Sandra Bullock locked in with oh, my yeah. second pick. She is fantastic, Jason. She is fantastic. Well, since we're going to agree to disagree on that one, but no, okey-dokey. man, no, man. Since she burst on the screen with Speed, Ocean's Eight, she dominates. Gravity is incredible, and the only reason that Gravity is good is because of Sandra Bullock. Gravity is the most compelling argument that you have for Cinder Bullet. That yeah, movie it, was outstanding, and she carried it. Ex thank you, thank you, thank you for agreeing with me. And like, Bird, like it's it's weird that we're in this world of Netflix movies now because that's true. She, I they, did like her in in Bird because Box. it because Netflix it feels like well that's not a cinematic that's not a blockbuster, but when you look at the actual numbers, like Bird Box is one of the most watched movies in history because of how it was distributed and it's also very good i enjoyed bird box a lot because of sandra bullock so very happy with my first two picks all right uh i get to pick twice then huh 
Yes, you do. This is tough. This Here is tough. Here comes Audrey Hepburn. Hey, she is. Well, see, she... I, I feel like I'm guilty of taking the draft too seriously. That's what I feel like I'm guilty of in this situation. You do you, man. I think because Hepburn's when, a great pick. Because I am placing such a value on the historical and the nominations and the, those things. And you guys are like picking y- y- your favorite actresses. Yes. Yeah, well, I mean, that's because what I'm saying. You, he, he, so that's why I said I'm guilty of taking, you know, like if we did an iconic athletes one and then you guys, you know, I just took them all from Phoenix or something. That's how I feel like we were. Well, but here's what I'll say. Here's what's very interesting about both actors and actresses. You can, it's like, Jason and I just went through the IMDb of Kurt Russell. Kurt Russell, A-list actor. Literally very, very, 100 movies on his IMDb credits as an actor. Like, incredibly well known. This is Kurt Russell we're talking about. Go through his IMDb, look at his movies, and count on one hand how many like yes. really iconic movies that Kurt Russell, right. who was a superstar, superstar, how many movies of those is he involved in? Like being involved in four to five known iconic masterpiece, whatever you want to it's count all it the words. Like it's that's very 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 difficult for for someone who who works in. Uh, who makes movies to do. Mm-hmm. All right. So I'm going to go with, I got two picks here. Um, There's only one that I hope you don't take because I'm ta- the, the, the first pick I'm going to take is Kate Winslet. Okay. Uh, that's a great pick. Okay. I think great Kate pick. Winslet is absolutely incredible and in everything that she's in uh, commands the screen. thinks she belongs on the Mount Rushmore. Yes. I, I don't, I don't have a problem with that one. The second she's, pick I'm she's going to be really mad that Meryl Streep's on the same mountain, but. Good no, time. she will be quite happy with it. <laughs> They're both Academy Award <laughs> winners. <laughs> you guys are brutal. All right, my third pick is going to be Jennifer Connelly. Oh, oh my I man, love I love like, Jennifer Connelly. It, She's outstanding. I knew. I knew it, well, well, let me let me ask you this: if San, if I had not picked Sandra Bullock, do you pick Sandra Bullock? No. Dang it! Then no, I, I misplayed the game. I I knew. Yeah. I felt in my Did heart. Did you want that Connelly to come back? I you felt thought about heart, it. No, I I thought. It, either whoever I don't take is not coming back. So Jennifer Connelly was on my list because, dude, her in Requiem for a Dream is uh, that's that's a movie you really only have to watch one time. <laughs> my favorite Jennifer Connelly movie, if you want to add to that list, when I told you the other Jennifer Lawrence movie, is House of Sand and Fog. If you haven't seen House of Sand and Fog, uh, unbelievable movie. It was uh, two thousand three. I thought you were going to say The Rocketeer. No, it's <laughs> The Rocket. She was in that. Yeah, she was in that. She was in uh, what? Uh, Beautiful, Beautiful Mind. Beautiful Mind, yeah. Uh, but you should, you should watch House Labyrinth. of Sand and Fog. It was Labyrinth, unbelievable. man. That's Oh, yeah. But that I got was in early. Young, I got that in was early young Jennifer Connelly. Yeah, I was. Uh, that, yeah. I have never seen Labyrinth. What? I'm sorry, America. I saw it for the first time maybe like three or four years ago. It's great. Does it so, hold up, Andy? It's. I mean, David Bowie, Jennifer Connelly. Yeah, it holds up. It, it holds fine. up for what it is. It's I mean, it, you're going to watch it, and there's going to be a lot of like. Am I going to be really geez. scared? No, no, no. No, you, I no think you'll you would, be like, I, you'll laugh. <laughs> yes, you'll laugh. You'll have okay. fun. I think you'll enjoy right. it. I think your kids okay. will like it. Put it All on right. the list. I'll yeah, fire it is, it up. it's fine for kids. I think. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to remember. When they wake up from nightmares, I'll call you. Yeah. At two so, in the morning. Feel very happy with those two picks. Um, okay, so what's your team right now? Meryl Streep. Meryl Streep, Kate Winslet, Jennifer Connelly. Okay, all right. Mm. Uh, it's really hard to narrow this list down. I've got like 50 it's, that I feel like they're all yeah, in the it, same it's tier. The, the combination of the list plus the game of the draft right now has me... Yeah, clearly I could have waited for Meryl Streep. Very, yeah, we've made that abundantly clear. All right, Mike, you're up. Uh, all right. Oh man, I'm so tilted right now. I have because I have no idea. I have zero idea where Jason is going. To you and go. me both, brother. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, okay, then I will. I'm just gonna go the the route of. I'm not gonna play the game because I don't know where Jason's gonna go. So I just I'm going to take who I believe. Should be there. I will take Kate Blanchett, who Blanchett. is... Blanchett. Yes. 
Is it Blanchette? I, honestly, that that's a that's a tough one. Uh, but she is absolutely incredible. The Aviator. She helped carry that movie. Uh, maybe even a little bit more. I mean, and then you know, Lotro, Life Aquatic. She can do, like Jason was saying, she can do everything from from dramatic to actually being hilarious. And of course, she can be super BA in Thor when she came in and was just wrecking house. When uh, Mjolnir, goodbye. Yeah. Thanks to you no, said her a, that's a, fictional that's a, Thor name better than her real name, but uh, yeah. that's a good pick. Yes. Uh, it was a good pick, and uh, man, I, I got two now. Uh, can I interest either of you in allowing me to have twenty? Because I've got <laughs> I've got a list here of a lot of people, and I feel like it's impossible to build a team of just four that really represents. Uh, me and the and the and the, the the legacy it is just tough so here's here's one that i know i know this one's in because it's a it's it's a throwback it's an uh an old timey actress you could say but at the same time modern day i absolutely love here comes judy dench oh i, I look she, she's on she the should list. be on the judy list but on the list awesome but um no that's a young woman mike uh, judy dench <laughs> oh, is, a, no. is a young woman i'm going with if maggie go smith because I love, love, love Maggie Smith. You're talking Googling about Mag yes, Maggie you know, Smith. No, she's from, you, movies you know her. wise. It's Harry Potter. She's that Professor you would know McGonagall her yeah. in Harry Potter. Uh, television she, uh, wise, okay, okay, well, yeah, okay. Sneak, sneaking the television lore of Downton Abbey in there for uh, I you. I mean, but, acting is acting. You know, these aren't movie actresses. These are actresses. She's been yeah. on. She's oh, been she's in theater. Great. She's been in TV. She is. I did think of her for sure. I mean, I just. I love I've never seen her in any role ever where I didn't think she was just just perfect for the role and she's um, 85 she's a cool 85 yeah I, I'm a I'm a bizarre a bizarrely large Maggie Smith fan I just think she's, <laughs> she's hey, man, awesome. lean into it yeah no I, you do I, you I so now my list is Julia Roberts Jennifer Lawrence and Maggie Smith I've got the age, so I feel like I'm going. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with someone younger, more modern here. Now that I, you know, to to kind of juxtapose uh, with of Maggie Smith. There are so many good ones here. I'm gonna surprise myself. Oh no, I'm not. Oh goodness. Oh, this is <laughs> what is happening right this now. This is a back and forth fair. I want so many to be my last pick. All right, I am going to go with Emily Blunt. You no. All right, I did it. That's what you hope. You hope for She's the great. no screams. She's great. She, she can be an action movie. She can be a drama. She can be a comedy. She, unlike Meryl Streep, can be in a musical and sing. Um, um, Meryl Streep's been in musicals, but go on. No, you didn't hear the whole sentence I said. You said and sing. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to take Emily Blunt. I think she belongs there, but uh, my deepest respect to about 500 other names on my list. Mike's not happy. Uh... But he does get to pick now. <laughs> Not that <laughs> I will select actress. Emily Blunt. Mm. Unavailable. How come on? You have a list of 10,000 and that's where you go? Uh, but she's fantastic. I know. That's why I wanted to put her on my Mount Rushmore. <laughs> well, good news. You can't. <laughs> uh. So your team is done, Jay. Why don't you read it while Mike thinks about his last pick? I have Julia Roberts, Jennifer Lawrence, Maggie Smith and Emily Blunt, All a right. great Mount Rushmore. I expect to win both genders of the Mount Rushmore drafts now. Did you win the first one? I dominated. Mike, your team so far is Natalie Portman, Sandra Bullock, Kate Blanchett, and then you have one final pick. Mm. This is, this I believe you mean tree. Blanchett. Blanchett, yes. Sometimes you get over eager. All right. Oh my goodness. This is terrible. I'm happy because I have two that I really want, and you can't take I both. had one that I really want. <laughs> That's interesting, though, that you guys both owned in on. Uh, because great. she's awesome. Dude, have you seen Edge of Tomorrow? Edge of Tomorrow is like the first movie that comes to mind with her, which I think is not for most people. No, although it, Mary no, that, Poppins. That Edge of Tomorrow is for everybody. Whoever named that movie. Well, it you was should, renamed. Did what they rename it to? I, I don't remember if Edge of Tomorrow was the final name, but it came out as like Tomorrow 
no, tomorrow Edge never of tomorrow dies was or something. The US release. Live die repeat was Live re- die repeat, and then it was renamed okay. to Edge of Tomorrow. Whoever named both of those things should be removed from <laughs> your position because that movie is awesome. That movie is awesome. But the name and the marketing were so bad. All right. I will uh, Final pick, Mike. <laughs> I can give you. Would you like to? Have? No, I I have it narrowed down. I'm gonna go with. I'm, I'm taking Charlotte. Char. Oh my gosh, Charlize Theron. There you go. That was one uh, of the two that I was considering with my yeah, final be, pick because she is also freaking awesome in Mad Max. I mean, I mean, like low key, she's just the voice, but in Kubo and the Two Strings, she's super awesome. Yeah, she she's also won, well, but, won the best actress. She's Yes, she, was it she totally? is absolutely fantastic. Uh, All right, that's a good pick. I, I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's you made good... my pick for me because you eliminated Excellent. one of All my right. two, which means Nicole Kidman is my final pick. All right. All right. There are a lot it. of things. She she can sing as well, and uh, Moulin Rouge, great movie. So I she will finish ages, it out. She ages better than most humans age. on the planet. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, which is funny because... currently 28 years old. <laughs> Well, Meryl Streep and Nicole Kidman both in if, Big Little Lies. If Lions. her and so. Brad Pitt had a child, they would never. Oh they would never age. Never the child age. Would, it would be Benjamin Button. Yeah. Um, all right. So Meryl Streep, Kate Winslet, Jennifer Connelly, Nicole Kidman. My final four of the Mount Rushmore of iconic actresses. Did you guys have any? Uh, since we're done, Helen I'll, Mirren. Helen was Mirren one. was on my sure. list. Reese Witherspoon. Judy Dench I think was on she's my, been my great. My list. Yeah. I like Emma Stone, Kieran Knightley, Halle Berry. Uh, Kristen Bell, Anna Kendricks. I, I didn't have the heart McCartan. to do Grace Kelly to match up with my oh, uh, Jimmy Stewart. I was going to do that just to, so to mirror them. Amy Adams. There's so but, many. Uh, uh, and Skojo. Shout out to Skojo, who is just, she's now sure. just Black Widow. But, I mean, we, we at least saw with Marriage Story, you're like, oh, yeah, no, Scarlett Johansson's great. She connect. All right, we're done. What did we learn today? <laughs> All right, what did we learn today? Uh, we learned that... Uh, I learned my- that sloth's <laughs> nipples are in their armpits, Ooh. and that's a really important life lesson. I was going to say, I learned that I will probably never beat Al in that game. I also learned that Mike had a very large, potentially valuable video game collection in his had. closet. How many of them are open? Let me learn one more fact. How many of those are unopened? Unopened? I Do would you have put, a few? I would all, put all the new ones at like five... No, no, five is way too high. Like 2%. There's definitely some games that are in there that the intentions were strong and <laughs> it just never happened. All right. Did you learn anything today, Mike? Uh, I, man, I learned that I, when you, when you have a, tra- a chance to draft Emily Blunt, you just take have it. to take it or you pay the price. Take care. Thank you for following. tuning in. Goodbye, everybody. Thanks for listening to the Spitballers Podcast. To see what other nonsense the guys are up to, check out spitballerspod.com.